Hey guys, so of course iOS 16.3 developer and public beta 1 has been out for a couple of days now, but you guys already know I like to come back a few days later and share with you guys any additional new features and changes that I may come across after using this update for a couple of days. Now there's some interesting things happening here that continue to build upon the momentum of awesome new features coming to the iPhone and improvements to security, which I think are really, really nice and I wanted to share those with you guys in today's video. Now as always, if you would like to stay up to date with the latest, I iOS news and Apple software updates of course don't forget to subscribe and make sure you turn on those notifications so that you don't miss another episode now in case you guys didn't catch my initial coverage on iOS 16.3 I'll link that in the description down below but let me give you a quick recap now Apple is expected to launch a few additional features that are not here just yet so something like Apple Pay later is coming with iOS 16.3 and a savings account for your Apple account here as well for the wallet of iPhone these two features are not here just yet but we're looking to see these features with iOS 16.3 now another feature expected is custom accessibility mode now this feature, of course, was also expected to be launching with iOS 16.2, but it did not. So hopefully we see this with iOS 16.3. It makes a ton of sense. Now, advanced data protection is now here with 16.3 for the U.S., but Apple is looking to expand to additional countries around the world. Apple has not yet mentioned which countries will be making the list with iOS 16.3, but we'll let you know as soon as we find out. Now, one of my favorite new features with the iMessage platform expected to be released with 16.3 is the iMessage contact key verification. This feature is very, very important. Now, if you want to learn more, I'll link Apple's information in the description down below, their press release or their newsroom article, where you can find out more what this feature is all about. A really cool new feature. Now, one of the features that is here is the security keys for your Apple ID. Now, this feature allows you to store a physical key onto a thumb drive or NFC device where you can physically log into your Apple ID. You guys have been asking, how do I get access to this if I'm running the beta? Well, simple you need an nfc compatible device or a usb thumb drive you go to your icloud account here on your iphone and then you go into passwords and security now as you can see right here we can click on add security key there it is and there's the option strong account security and replacing verification codes again these are going to be physical codes that you can store in order to log into your apple id but keep in mind you want to make sure you keep these safe in a spot where you can remember because if you do lose these you won't be able to log into your Apple ID and Apple will not be able to help you log into your Apple ID. So keep in mind this feature as it is important, it is so private that if you lose those keys, you can't get access to your account. So yeah, an awesome feature, of course, that I know many government agencies will probably end up using, but maybe not the typical user will end up on this one. But yeah, major, major improvements to security with iOS 16.3. Now I wanna go ahead and shift my attention to things I've noticed after using the software for a couple of days. Number one, a new splash screen for Apple Music. There it is. So this is pretty much something that explains everything for Apple Sing, which is one of the new features on 16.2. Now. I never got this splash screen for Apple Music on 16.2, but I did get it with 16.3. Let me know in those comments down below. Have you ever seen this one right here? A quick description on a splash screen for Apple Sing. Now, another awesome new feature that I think Apple should do more of is this one right here. You see this animation transferring music to HomePod. Of course, this feature is not new. However, it looks like not many users know about it. So Apple went ahead and created an entire animation on how to transfer music from your iPhone over over to your home pod of course this is a screen recording but the feature is under settings if we go into general and we go into airplay and handoff there it is transfer to home pod i do turn it off often because when i'm in studio here next to the home pod i don't want it to constantly be switching over but once it is enabled all you have to do once you're playing music is go ahead and put your iphone next to your home pod and you get this animation right here with ios 16.3 let me go ahead and show you that one more time so let's go ahead and play that screen recording so just imagine we're doing it right now just like so boom and we can and transfer the music again nothing new in regards to features but this uh, little screen recording that i just showed you this animation apple should do more of because believe it or not to this day there's a lot of users that don't use a lot of features on the iPhone just simply because they don't know they really exist. So there you guys have it. Just a quick overall update on some of the latest new things I've noticed and a quick recap on 16.3. Let me know what you think about this software update so far if you're running the beta or the public beta. Thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.